It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Finance Daily, Episode 46, Nine Intentional Ways to Challenge Consumerism in Your Life, by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Finance Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in personal finance five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dan Warren. Hey again, everyone, and welcome to Optimal Finance Daily, where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And today's post comes from Joshua Becker, who we first heard from two Mondays ago. He talked about a practical solution to your money problems on that show. So if you'd like to hear that, check out episode 31. And before we get into today's content, if you are interested in minimalism and want to be entered to win a book on the subject, You can have a really good chance of winning one by being a part of our weekly newsletter. We give away a book every single month to a random email subscriber. So to join, simply text the word financial to the number 44222. That's financial to 44222. Or you can simply visit us online at oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com. And that's it for the housekeeping today. So let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Nine Intentional Ways to Challenge Consumerism in Your Life by Joshua Becker of BecomingMinimalist.com Don't buy what you don't need. Consumerism is not a pathway to joy and meaning in life. This is not a new revelation. In fact, we all know it to be true. If specifically asked the question, nobody would ever say the secret to a joyful, meaningful life is to buy a lot of stuff. Deep down in our hearts, we know we were made for something bigger, something more significant than mere consumption. Nobody really believes happiness is directly tied to the number of things we own, yet almost all of us live like it. We work more hours than ever before, earn more income, but save less. Personal debt has increased dramatically over the previous three decades, and consumer spending has been exalted to a virtue in our society, even patriotic. As a result, the average credit card holder now carries four different credit cards in his or her pocket. Shopping malls outnumber high schools two to one. 70% of Americans visit a shopping mall each week. Televisions outnumber persons in American homes. Home sizes have doubled in the past 50 years. And consumer debt has risen to 35% of household income. Will Rogers said it like this, quote, too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like, end quote. We never intentionally set out to buy more than we need or spend more than we make, but here's the problem. Mindless consumption always turns into excessive consumption, and you can tweet that. And excessive consumption results in more stress, more burden, more pressure to impress, more envy, less financial freedom, less generosity, less contentment, and I haven't even begun to mention the environmental impact. It's time to rethink our spending habits, rediscover thoughtfulness and intentionality in our purchases, and remind ourselves that happiness is not on sale at the department store. Buying more is not the solution. We were made for greater pursuits than material possessions, and our lives should reflect that truth. How then might we begin to rethink and challenge mindless consumerism in our lives? Consider this intentional approach. 1. Stop and reevaluate. Look at the life you have created. Are you finding the time, money, and energy for the things that matter most? Have your possessions become a burden on your life in any way? Slow down long enough to honestly evaluate the whole picture your income, your mortgage, your car payment, your spending habits, your day-to-day pursuits. Are you happy? Or is there perhaps a better way? Two, stop copying other people. Just because your neighbors, classmates, and friends are chasing a certain style of life does not mean you need to as well. Your life is too unique to live like everyone else. And if you think you'll be happier by following all the latest trends in society, you're wrong. Just ask anybody who has stopped. Three, Understand your weaknesses. Recognize your trigger points. Are there certain stores that prompt unnecessary purchases in your life? Are there products, addictions, or pricing patterns, clearance sales maybe, that prompt an automatic response from you? Maybe there are specific emotions like sadness, loneliness, grief, that give rise to mindless consumption. Identify, recognize, and understand these weaknesses. 51% of the solution can be found by simply recognizing the problem. Four, Look deep into your motivations. Advertisers play on our motivations by appealing to our desires in subtle ways. Advertisements are no longer based on communicating facts about a product. Instead, 
They promise adventure, reputation, esteem, joy, fulfillment, and success. What inner motivations are subconsciously guiding your purchases? What motivations, maybe greed or envy, need to be rooted out? And what motivations, perhaps meaning, significance, need to find their fulfillment elsewhere? Five, seek contribution with your life and usefulness in your purchases. To live is to consume. As contributing members of society, we are going to work and earn and purchase and consume, but we are more than consumers, we are contributors. Our presence on this earth ought to bring value to the people around us. Purchase only what you need to more effectively accomplish your unique role in this world. Everything else is only a distraction. Just because you can buy something doesn't mean you should. Six, count the hidden cost of each purchase. Too often when we purchase an item, we only look at the sticker price but this is rarely the full cost. Our purchases always cost more. They require our time, energy, and focus. Cleaning, organizing, maintaining, fixing, replacing, removing. They prompt worry, stress, and attachment. Henry David Thoreau said it best, quote, the price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it, end quote. Seven, test your limits. Experiment with a no shopping challenge. You set the terms. Even the world's biggest shopper can find one experiment to test their boundaries. Go 30 days with no consumer purchases, 60 days without visiting the mall, or 120 days without buying clothes. You set the specific challenge based on your needs. You'll break the cycle of shopping in the short term and lay the groundwork for greater victory in the long term. Eight, give more things away. Your life will feel lighter, your heart will feel warmer, the world will be better, and you will be reminded that shopping is not the answer. Nine, do more of what makes you happy. Your possessions are not making you happy. Once our basic needs have been met, the happiness found in consumerism is fleeting at best. Instead, find what it is that truly makes you happy and do more of it. I find my happiness in faith, family, friends, and contribution. Your list may differ slightly, but either way, owning a whole bunch of stuff is almost certainly not on it. Make intentionality your highest pursuit, not consumerism. You just listened to the post titled Nine Intentional Ways to Challenge Consumerism in Your Life by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. If you have any comments for us about the post or the author, or perhaps you have an idea for an author you'd like to hear me read here on the show, let us know. Come visit oldpodcast.com, that's oldpodcast.com, and give us that feedback. And really quick, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can be entered to win a book called Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life by the Minimalists every single month if you're part of our free weekly newsletter. And you can join very quickly and efficiently by texting the word financial to 44222. That's the word financial to 44222. Or you can visit us online at oldpodcast.com. And that's it for our Minimalist Monday episode. Have a great start to your week, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from amazing bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together... We'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.